Okay, so am I number two now? Yep. Okay, so I almost didn't include this film, uh, not because I don't love it, but because, you know, there's other films that maybe entertain me more or whatever, but I think I just, you just gotta have Tree of Wooden Clogs in your top five, I think. You know, it's just such an excellent, in terms of, like, excellence, you know, just cinematic excellence, and I think that of all the films on my list, this is the, like, contemplative masterpiece you know this is this is this is the film that like it 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 gets at this contemplative thing in a way that maybe no other film on the list does it's really just this flow that you enter into what's your number two nathan my number two is drum roll tree of wooden clogs (laughs) uh i absolutely agree thomas contemplative masterpiece and i debated about where where to put this in the order but i put it at number two um because this, if there's one film that I would point other filmmakers of faith um, to to like start their education from, it would be this one, and I mean that from a very practical point of view, not just kind of the you know the the beauty of the film. Um, it's remarkable to me that this film, you know, is made by it was I mean only basically Ermano only basically shot it himself. You know, it, it's very small crew. Um, I just, to me, it's a, it's a testament to what you can achieve with less, what you can achieve with, you don't need this giant Hollywood thing. Um, and he's doing something very difficult. He's shooting a historical period film, you know, with very modest resources. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think it's an incredible example of what, you know, what mod, truly mod, modest filmmaking kind of looks like. Um, and it yields this, this contemplative vision of reality that is so... Yeah compelling and thorny and, 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 you know, it's just got everything. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to like put too much weight on it as like, I don't like, again, there, there are films that I would dr- drop, watch at the drop of a hat more than this one, but right. I, I, it, it's yeah. just, it's so inspiring, um, on every level. Yeah. The reason this film is in my number two is because there's something just like there's, it feels like in another category of greatness, you know, mm-hmm. and like grandeur from like the other films on <laughs> the other films on my favorites list. Yeah, um, it feels like yes, it's not the film that I would most readily rewatch, but it feels like it's entering this other sphere it, of, 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 art, like, of world art. It's Buck. along with my yeah. number along with my number one. My number two is Tree of Wooden Clogs, <laughs> directed by Hermano Olmi. Wow. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I I was trying to explain wow. this to Karina to my wife, and I said, okay, listen, just Think of everything that a film can do wrong and then think of the opposite of that. And that's what Tree of Wooden Clocks does. <laughs> I, I think that it's I think that it's essentially a perfect film. Um wow. and uh and and probably of all the films on the the film list, it was the one I was most ready to rewatch as soon as I finished it. Mm. I was I was like sorry I didn't end up rewatching it, you know, more than I needed to for our uh podcast. Um but uh but but I, I think I said on the podcast as we were discussing it, it was like I was looking forward to watch it to rewatching it again yeah, yeah. right away. Um so it's it's yeah, it's a perfect film. Great. Amazing. All right, that's cool. All did the same number two. Okay, number one, let's see if we all do the same number one. Yeah, I'm really I'm Andre really... Rubliov. Um now you could argue this is a less perfect than tree of film than pre of wooden clogs yes. in certain respects. Yeah. But in terms of just like sheer grandeur and just like the way it hits at its conclusion, like it's got to be my number one. Again, there's so much. It's a difficult film in many ways. I can think of almost no films that have the sheer like impact that this film, epic impact that this film has in its conclusion, in the bell sequence, and, and then mm-hmm. the final icon sequence. Um, it is... Um, you know, is it the most religious film ever? Like the most truly religious film ever? I don't know. Um, I, to, to me, this is like competing with another film, which I'll mention later as best film ever made in terms of like in, in, in on, on an artistic level, mm. it's not the most accessible film and maybe accessibility is like an artistic value in itself. You could argue that. So maybe tree of wooden clogs is more accessible, but, but yeah, Andre Rublev is like, it's just, uh. It's it's the it's in terms of like this is this is one of the few on the list that I would put in like just like world historical art history, one of the great works of human art, you know, and Tree of Wooden Clogs sort of approaches that territory for me as well. Um, yeah. 
Well, I couldn't agree more. Uh, but everyone, I'm sure it'll be a big surprise to everybody is Andrei Rublev. And I have um, i won't go into my own story, but this film's obvious. I've spoken before. This film's very, very personally important to me, um, both just personally and as a filmmaker. It just hit me at a point in my life when I really needed it uh, about 12 years ago. And, um, but yeah, it's, I couldn't agree more with everything you said, Thomas, like the, I think the thing I would focus on is, and it all comes down to that, that finale, because watching the film is such a, not disjointed, but it's a confusing experience where you're like, how does this all fit together? And and you, and you don't necessarily feel the flow. You don't necessarily feel the integrity, the integrity of the whole. And then that ending, you see where it's all going and you realize like we, we got to the, we got to the, the end we got to that ending <laughs> and it all makes sense. Um, and basically just the way that this film, it truly is lightning in a bottle in the sense of um, it's capturing a very, very strange idiosyncratic person, the, you know, personality in the director um, bringing himself to this material. But then also, also he's working with such incredible craftspeople and, and collaborators and they're all working together to bring this, this vision to life. Um, and then it's all directed to, you know, yeah, like a fundamentally kind of religious, um, purpose. Uh, I just don't know of another film that is, is so perfect in its messiness and in its like simplicity and purity of heart, even though there are real flaws in the film. And I debated too about whether this should go number two or number one for me, because mm even just talking to you guys and going through the podcast experience with you, you know, it, one of the benefits for me has been realizing, um, you know, sometimes I've glossed over like some of the more problematic aspects of Andre Rublev, you know, with the, the, the nudity and stuff like that. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it, it, yeah, these are real things to, to deal with, but yeah, it's just, it's just the height that it reaches as like, I, again, I don't, I don't really, I, words are not sufficient, so I'll just stop there. It still but, does feel like, you know, the Sistine Chapel, like, of, of cinema. I can't believe this film exists. Um, it feels heroic. And, and again, it was very important to me in my journey because it told, it opened a door for me to say this, for, for a filmmaker, uh, you know, for, who wants to follow Christ, this is what's possible. You know, it's not simply that, oh, you could go make Citizen Kane or something. And Citizen Kane is a masterpiece, you know, but Citizen Kane does not have the soul that, that this film does. Um, right. It's totally. just, it just, it opens everything up, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. My number one is Andre Rublev. <laughs> um, Interesting, because back in the day, I remember you saying, yeah, Decalogue's my favorite. I was like, well, nah, man, Andre uh, Rublev. But, you know, Decalogue is, and, and this is why I prefaced my number five selection by saying that Decalogue is the one that I'm probably most ready to rewatch at any moment. Interesting. Uh, it's it's still sort of like a personal favorite. Yeah. I probably enjoy it more in toto. Mm -hmm. um, but Andre Rublev, when I was explaining to my wife, this selection, I said, it may be less perfect than Tree of Wooden Clogs, but it is more divine. And before you come at me saying like, oh, the divine is perfect, I'll just say that, you know, the cross is foolishness and a stumbling block. And uh, and I think that there's something to that, that, that this isn't the most accessible, that it is kind of messy, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, you know, there there might be some stumbling blocks there, but what it accomplishes is something miraculous. Um, and so I think it is the best, the single best example of like the cinematic miracle mm. or, or the miracle that cinema is capable of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there just wasn't quite any other experience that approached my first experience of mm. Andre Rublev. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. 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 So great. Great. Yep. Well, that's awesome. We all picked the same number two and number one. Totally. That's cool. So cool. Thank you.